schedule for the Monday, February 27, 2023 Board of Control meeting. It is 11, I mean, it is 10.59 a.m. We have Councilwoman Meredith Turner. Here. We have Trevor Meckler serving as an alternate for Purnell Jones, Jr. Here. Mike Dever. Here. Catherine Gallagher serving as an alternate for Chris Renee County Executive. Here. Lee Tucker serving as chairperson and as an alternate for Michael Chambers Fiscal Officer. Here. Paul Porter. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. If we can take a minute to review the meetings from the minutes from the February 21st Board of Control meeting. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Turner. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Is there any public comment? No public comment. Moving on to contracts and awards. First item, BC 2023-106, Department of Public Works submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to Software Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $5,679.36 for renewal of donor perfect online subscription software and support to, use, to be used by the County Animal Shelter for the period February 10, 2023 through February 9, 2024, and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Tom Pavich, Public Works. This first item is uh, approval of a purchase order to renew the subscription for the County Animal Shelter's uh, donor and uh, fundraising software. Uh, the vendor's software where it's been in place for a number of years. We vetted this years ago, and this is an IT standard item that's on the uh, their standards list as a, uh, a reoccurring software that we utilize on a regular basis. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Porter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Councilman Dale Miller is now present. Next item, BC 2023-107, Department of Public Works recommend an award on RQ 11663 and enter into a purchase order with National Flag and Display Company Incorporated, DBA Metro Flag Company, and the amount not to exceed $70,380 for the purchase and delivery of 122,400 U.S. flags for Veterans Service Commission. Uh, good morning, everyone. Tom Pavich again, Public Works. Uh, this is the annual order of the U.S. flags. Uh, we, uh, Public Works conducts this bid on behalf of Veterans Services. These are flags that are to be um, placed at uh, gravestones of veterans for Memorial Day. Uh, this year it was a formal bid process, went to 15 vendors. We had three bids submitted. Uh, national flag and display was the low bidder. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Turner. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next Thank item. You. Next item, BC 2023-108. Mm -hmm. Department of Public Works submitting an amendment to a contract with C&K Industrial Services Incorporated for cleaning and televising of sewers in various communities for the period June 1st, 2021 through May 31st, 2023 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $200,000. Good morning, members of the board. Tom Sotak, representing Public Works. Uh, Public Works is requesting approval of a contract amendment with C&K Industrial Services Incorporated for additional funds totaling $200,000. Primary goal of this contract is to clean and televise uh, sewers in various communities under maintenance contracts with DWD, DPW. Uh, projection areas are expected to be cleaned and televised annually. Uh, C&K has a cold weather truck available for emergency block mains if needed and a lateral, lateral launch equipment if, if requested. If county work is not available during weekends or on emergency calls, C&K has been very reliable for services needed. This, is met, this amendment is required due to increased use of services due to the mild winter we, ex, we uh, just uh, uh, been through and the uh, internal equipment outages uh, that we've been going through since uh, covid uh, and increased demand for cleaning services by our member communities. And I, I would, would uh, elaborate that this is, uh, will be paid for the uh, enterprise funds from the various communities for this work. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. 
Next item, BC 2023-109, Department of Public Works submitting an amendment to a contract with CA Agresta Construction Company for resurfacing of Green Road from Miles Road to Emory Road in the City of Warrenville Heights in connection with the 2021 through 2024 Transportation Improvement Program for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $122,790.23 recommending to accept construction as complete in accordance with plans and specifications, requesting authority for the county treasurer to release the escrow account in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 153.63. Once again, Tom Sotak representing Public Works. Uh, yes, uh, Public Works requesting approval of contract amendment with the CA Agresta Construction Company for an anticipated cost of $122,790.23. Uh, this is a final amended agreement, so the project is complete. And the work involved the removal and replacement of deteriorated curb and drive aprons, construction uniform three-inch asphalt overlay, installation of ADA-compliant curb ramps, and other related items uh, shown on the plans. Uh, the project was uh, on Green Road once again from Miles Road to Emory Road, City of Warrensville Heights, Ohio, and that is uh, Council District 9. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? I do. I have a question about this um, this material that wasn't approved. What mm -hmm. uh, safeguards do we have in place now to make sure that we are using approved? Well, in this particular instance, um, all the materials have to be, uh, there's a qualified products list. Actually, the material used was an approved material. It's just that the source wasn't approved at the time. So there's, uh, if you look at it, there's uh, several companies on there. Some of these companies may have 500 products that are on there. So uh, it's just one of those things that have to be checked uh, uh, reliably by our staff. And I could say that in this case, we did meet with ODOT and we uh, was, went through the, the use and the application. The materials find appropriate for the use. So that's why it was deemed to be left in place with the $500, $500 administrative charge per our specifications in this case. Any additional questions? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Turner. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-110, Department of Public Works submitting an amendment to a contract with Schindler Elevator Corporation for elevator maintenance and repair services for various county facilities for the period September 1st, 2018 through August 31st, 2023 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $412,000. Good morning, everyone. Matt Reimer from the Department of Public Works. Uh, this item is an amendment to our Schindler Elevator Services contract for a variety of uh, capital-funded repairs to our elevator systems, in specifically at the Justice Center and at the Juvenile Justice Center, uh, unrelated repair issues on seven different elevator uh, uh, components. Um, I had a number of advanced questions uh, from this item. Uh, we are rebidding this contract uh, as scheduled for the, uh, the duration of the contract currently runs through August 31st of this year. Currently uh, preparing the RFP specifications for that, but these repairs cannot wait, which is why we're amending the contract. It only uh, adds the dollars, no additional time extension. Happy to answer any further questions. Any questions on this item? Seeing no questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-111, Department of Public Works recommend an award on RQ 11520 and enter into a contract with Shermer Construction, LLC, and the amount not to exceed $382,398 for minor rehabilitation of Miles Road Bridge number 11.00 over Deer Creek over Deer Lick Creek and bridge number 11.10 over the Chagrin River in the village of Bentleyville. Once again, uh, good morning, members of the board. Tom Sotak from Public Works. Uh, this project uh, is the rehabilitation of the Miles Road bridges, as uh, stated. Uh, this project consists of removal of existing railing, uh, replaced with new railings, uh, resealing the decorative concrete parapets, and a painting of the curb plates. Uh, the bid price was $382,398, and the engineer's estimate was $370,000 even, and that's 3.3 uh, uh, over the engineer's estimate. I'm uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Councilwoman Turner. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-112. Department of Development submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in a payment to Historic Preservation Group, LLC, and the amount not to exceed $1,965 for completion of National Historic Preservation Act Section 106 reviews for the period October 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Laura Sims from the Department of Development. Uh, this is a request for uh, a purchase order to pay the balance of the 2022 project that we are uh, program that we had with uh, Historic Preservation Group. The uh, we had a not to exceed purchase order in place. However, the number of um, examinations that they had to do for the uh, the historic reviews were more than we had anticipated. So we expended that, and then this will pay the rest of those invoices. We have we are working on a contract um, this year with them to conduct those historic preservation reviews. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? There are no questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-113, Department of Development submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in a payment to Area Zone Alliance in the amount of $125,000 for general operating support for the period March 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Laura Sims again from Department of Development. Uh, AeroZone is uh, one of the partner organizations that we work with. They're a nonprofit corporation that they're designed to create partnerships between business, uh, private sector, local governments, other nonprofits, builders, et cetera. Their focus is on bringing technology specifically uh, related to aerospace uh, to the Cleveland area. Um, and the payment with them would be for funds to support business growth and attraction, infrastructure development, talent development, and alignment with a focus on aerospace and NASA Glenn research. Also, um, Rishu Mahala from the organization is here in case you have any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? So, uh, Madam Chair, to my colleagues, I'd like to uh, thank the administration for support of the work of the AeroZone Alliance, which is uh, doing very important collaborative work so that uh, Greater Cleveland can take advantage of its proximity to NASA Glenn Research Center, as uh, other communities around the country have done. And our relationship with uh, Hopkins Airport is also critical, and we're working with with the city of Cleveland and uh, seven or eight or so surrounding communities, and it's uh, a very important collaboration. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Thank you. Next item, BC 2023-114, Department of Information Technology, on behalf of the Medical Examiner's Office, submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to TEC Communications and the amount not to exceed $8,168.80 for a state contract purchase of four Cisco Catalyst 9200 switches and two Cisco DNA essentials, and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Janelle Green, Department of IT. Um, again, this is on behalf of the Medical Examiner's Office. It uh, supplies uh, back-end equipment in order to expand the connectivity over at the Medical Examiner's location. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? There are no questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-115, Department of Information Technology submitting an amendment to a contract with AT&T Corp for Centrax telephone and messaging services for the period June 1st, 2014 through December 31st, 2023 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $400,000. Janelle Green, Department of IT. Um, this is an amendment to add additional funds for expected um, invoices for um, the fiscal year for 2023. 
Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Yes. Go ahead. Councilman Miller. Uh, yeah. Good morning, Janelle. I just, uh, the advanced question talked about that there's been additional lines created over the years. Right. So this is an amendment to, um, this is a sole source um, contract. Um, Centrex is essentially like plain old telephone lines and things like that have been in existence in the county for a number of years. So um, there has been lines that have been added, subtracted, moved, and things like that. But then also um, as lines are, are are further away from the central node, which is here um, in downtown Cleveland, there's an additional, essentially, transport fee for having those um, lines. So such as like an auto title um, office that is further away from the central node, there's been additional fees um, that have been added on there, which is a surcharge from AT&T. So um, this amendment would uh, cover those costs. OK, so it might not necessarily be more lines from where we were. It's just perhaps the location of Correct, the location of lines. Well, it would be an additional charge. I was a little confused when I saw that because our right. I figured I explained it. Yeah, yeah, it's so. like so. Um, the phone lines are not necessarily tied to an FTE account, right? So let's say uh, a line is in the sheriff's department, for example. There's a phone that's available for them to use for an emergency purpose. So it's not necessarily tied to an FTE. Is um, location um, and usage. Thank you. Sure. So. Uh, to what extent is this technology that's gradually being superseded by higher technology, or is this technology we expect to acquire for the foreseeable future? Um, Centrex, um, as a service for um, many uh, telecommunications com uh, companies, is, is going away. So um, there is some uh, trial and effort uh, that is being um, looked at for technologies um, in order to see what can replace them. I do have... Um, Alan Kilgore here, who is the infrastructure um, administrator, um, if you have very specific technical questions. But they are looking at other alternatives um, in order to replace it. So uh, my questions would be uh, to provide a general description of the alternatives that are being looked at and also a question of, uh, of how soon that we might be looking at making this transition. I'm going to step to the side here. Alan Kilgore, Technology Department. Uh, yes, uh, we've uh, reviewed two different technologies from AT&T's perspective. What they're doing, trying to do, is to migrate it more to a cellular-based technology, because they don't want to, AT&T's perspective does not want to maintain the telephone lines uh, that are throughout the county in terms of this uh, aging technology. Uh, since obviously a lot of uh, your, maybe your personal homes have now just migrated over the cellular, so they're trying to do a lot more investment into that. So they do uh, make a box that either house, allows for eight port devices, so eight telephone lines that we can connect, still maintain the service in the building as we see it today, or there's also a one port device that also can just be able to mimic one telephone line. Uh, there are certain circumstances that uh, may prevent that because, uh, I'll give, for example, our elevators uh, at this point, or burglar alarm lines, if the power is cut to the facility, the power is derived from AT&T, so there are certain restrictions that you have to maintain a dial tone service to your elevator, I believe up to four hours after the power goes out. So some of these technologies uh, won't necessarily be able to fit in all circumstances. And also the ability to potentially migrate some of these services over to our Cisco telephone service. I'll give, for example, the uh, jail specifically. Uh, most of the Centrix lines are at the uh, jail facility. Very large brick walls in terms of block walls, uh, cement walls in terms of running new cabling to the facility, which makes it very cost advantageous, is why that's one of the facilities that still has the Centrix. But yes, we are looking at various technologies, taking it building by building, different services, if it's elevator, if it's burglar line, to determine what's going to be the next approach. And how soon do you think transitions of this kind might occur? It would be multiple years uh, to be able to determine for, because it's located throughout many, many facilities here at the county to do an assessment to determine each line specifically. Uh, but we do want to start with the facilities that have that channel mileage charge that Janelle talked about, the ones that are furthest located away from the central switching office. Uh, one of them, two of them off the top of my head would be the animal shelter is one that we want to focus on because it's down in Valley View, so they have a lot of other customers, so there's a channel mileage charge there. I believe the uh, Board of Elections Warehouse is another facility, too, that has a channel mileage because it's on the east side, where I believe there's not a lot of uh, other businesses. And to what extent would this kind of transition inv involve cost savings? 
cost savings. Uh, for the lines, from what I understand, uh, what AT&T pitched, the cellular line was, I believe, in the mid-30s, and we're currently in the low 40s, assuming that there's no channel mileage charge associated with the lines today. So yes, there would be a cost savings associated with this. Especially if we migrate some of them over to the main Cisco telephone service, it would only be whatever that telephone purchases to align to the new standard. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions? Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Porter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-116, Department of Information Technology, submitting an amendment to a contract with AT&T Corp. for long-distance services for the period January 1, 2019 through December 31, 2023, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $20,000. Chanel Green, Department of IT. Um, this is a, an amendment uh, to the AT&T long distance contract in order to add additional funds um, to cover uh, some invoices for 2023. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding this? Am I correct that there's uh, only additional money but no change in the end date of the contract? Uh, for right now, yes. Um, we're looking at AT&T as a whole and um, looking to see, uh, to amend those contracts. Those are, with with Alan Kilgore's assistance, we'll be looking at those at a later time. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Thank you. Next item, BC 2023-117, correcting to read. County prosecutor submitting an RFP exemption which will result in an award recommendation to MNJ Technologies Direct Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $146,145 for a state contract purchase of additional net app cloud storage and maintenance and support services for the period February 27, 2023 to December 31st, 2026 mm -hmm. and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Good morning, uh, Josh Brower, Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office, uh, Department of IS. Uh, the item before you represents storage expansion for CCPO's NetApp storage infrastructure in both our primary and disaster recovery locations. Uh, this expansion is required for the rapidly expanding storage requirements for cell phones, uh, police body cam, and digital evidence. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Yes. Could you explain the change in the dates for the contracts from what's written on the printed agenda? Do I have that date? Today's date is the effective date. Today's date, yes, is the effective date. So instead of 1231, it's... Right, they gave oh. the state term contract originally for the original contract. Any additional questions on this item? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve as amended with the new date of February 27th, 2023 through 1230, 2026. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Thank you. Next item, BC 2023-118. Sheriff's Department submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to Action Defense LLC in the amount not to exceed $22,350 for firearm training for Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy certification for protective service officers effective February 27, 2022 through December 31st, 2023, and submitting a purchase order with said RFP exemption. Chris Costa, Sheriff's Department. This is a request for a not to exceed purchase order for our protective services officers. This will allow 10 PSO officers to get trained. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Mr. McAleer? Chris, do they have to go back every so often? Or? They do have to renew. I don't know the time frame on renewal, but this is both for renewal and new hires. Any additional questions? There are no additional questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-119, Sheriff's Department submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to the Daily Legal News Publishing Company, LTD, DBA, Daily Legal News Publishing, in the amount not to exceed $495,000 for legal advertisements of notice of foreclosure sale for delinquent land taxes in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 2329.26, effective upon signatures of all parties for a period of two years, and submitting a contract with said RFP exemption. 
Chris Costin, Sheriff's Department. This one is for our legal news, uh, foreclosure for delinquent land taxes. As you may recall, we came back twice last year. Uh, prosecutors are still running behind on a backlog due to COVID. Uh, by going into this contract, we're, we'll be set for two years. I won't have to come back here again. Are there any questions on this item? Yes. Councilman Miller. This is just so 20th century. Uh, what are we doing to get get the legislature to allow us to do uh, do a lot of this advertising online and save a lot of money? Well, I'm just a fiscal person, not a lobbyist, so I would have to check with the prosecutors on this. As of now, I do not believe they are moving forward to anything to get it online, um, but that's all I can tell you. So uh, I would... Uh, Strongly encourage that we push it. Oh, uh, I agree. This, this I agree. is uh, we could save a lot of this money. It's it, it's uh, it's a meaningful it's a meaningful cost that we should try to get reduced. Okay. I'll put another email out to them to let them know. Okay, please do. I Thank will. you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Mm -hmm. Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Councilwoman Turner. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-120, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, recommending an award and enter into a contract with Charter Communications Operating LLC, DBA Spectrum Reach LLC, and the amount not to exceed $39,943.20 for digital advertising and search placement services to recruit foster and adoptive parents for children in custody for the period January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. Good morning, Marcos Cortez with Health and Human Services on behalf of Children and Family Services. Again, this is a contract for Chartered Communications doing business as Spectrum Reach. Uh, this contract is for Spectrum to optimize search placement for foster and adoption recruitment. The estimate is to have 80% appearing within the top three search results on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. We have worked with Spectrum uh, the last four years on this service. We did conduct an informal bid. We received three bids and Spectrum was the lowest and best. Are there any questions on this item? You know, questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-121, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Senior and Adult Services, recommend an award on enter into a contract with Charter Communications Operating LLC, DBA Spectrum Reach LLC, and the amount not to exceed $23,256 for targeted digital display and video advertising services to promote services available for women ages 35 to 75 from the Division of Senior and Adult Services for the period January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. Good morning again, Marcos Cortez with Health and Human Services on behalf of Senior and Adult Services. Again, this is a contract with Spectrum. This, this contract that will provide display ads for, uh, per month targeting women 35 to 75 living in specific zip codes. Again, we have worked with Spectrum over the last few years for this project. Again, we conducted an informal bid. This time we received four bids and Spectrum was the lowest and best. Are there any questions on this item, Mr. McAleer? Good morning, Marcos. Do, Good morning. do we have any data that shows how effective they are in terms of the women that come for the services that they saw the advertising or campaign? To, how effective? Actually, I don't have any information related to that, but I can check with the department to see if they've been able to track it. I know that, that part of the requirements is that they provide dashboards um, to the department regularly. So we can uh, follow up with that. And do you know, does the division ask how they heard about the service when a person comes into the office, or how's that work? Do you, do you know that? I do not, okay. unfortunately. Again, I will follow up. Thank you. Yep. Any additional questions? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. 
Next item, BC 2023-122, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office of Homeless Services, recommend an award on RQ 10456 and enter into a contract with Mental Health Services for Homeless Persons, DBA Frontline Service, and the amount not to exceed $400,000 for coordinated intake services in connection with the Continuum of Care Program for the period January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. Good morning, <clears throat> excuse me, Erin Reardon, Office of Homeless Services. So I actually have the next four contracts and they're all part of OHS's uh, RFP for Homeless Continuum of Care Services. Um, we actually had requested an exemption from aggregation for this so that we could send items to either Board of Control or Council by dollar amount rather than the aggregate um, RFP amount. So this first one is, oh, and I should say that they're also from two funding sources so they will have two different contract terms. Um, and I will identify that by, by contract. But so the first one, this is for coordinated intake, which is the front door for the homeless continuum of care. Anybody who needs any kind of services, they first contact coordinated intake and then they route them to the appropriate services. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? There are no questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Devereaux. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-123, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office, Office of Homeless Services, recommend an award on RQ 10456 and enter into a contract with Fairhill Partners and the amount not to exceed $22,500 for emergency shelter and supportive services for seniors in connection with the Continuum of Care program for the period September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. So this is our contract with uh, Fairhill Partners. You notice it does have a different start date because this is emergency solutions funding. That is a grant fund. This is senior shelter for um, seniors who have found themselves homeless for the first time. We provide case management, emergency shelter, and support services. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Devereaux. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-124, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office of Homeless Services, recommend an award on RQ 10456 and enter into a contract with Mental Health Services for Homeless Persons, DBA Frontline Service, and the amount not to exceed $132,721 for diversion prevention services in connection with the Continuum of Care Program for the period September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. This is excuse me, our diversion program, which works in conjunction with coordinated intake. Uh, we hope to, if possible, divert people from entering into shelter by helping them explore other options that might prevent homelessness. And so this is funding that program. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? There are no questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2023-125, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office of Homeless Services, recommend an award on RQ 10456 and enter into a contract with Westside Catholic Center in the amount not to exceed $63,730 for emergency shelter services for families in connection with the Continuum of Care Program for the period September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. This is our contract with Westside Catholic Center that offers family shelter through uh, Mariah House where families can get uh, emergency shelter, supportive services, case management, and housing location assistance. Are there any questions on this item? Mr. McAleer? Aaron, I know some items are on the council agenda for approval tomorrow, and then obviously these four. Are there others coming from the same RFP uh, for another council meeting or for other board of controls? Uh, board of control. So that there's three more coming. Three more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Thank you. Next item, BC 2023-126. Correcting to read. Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiative Division, Office of Homeless Services, requesting to amend board approval number BC 2023-62, dated January 30th, 2023, which approved an exemption from aggregation of contracts on RQ8737 to various providers for the period September 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2023, to make the following changes. For 
alternative housing and related services and support for COVID recovery for various time periods to change the not to exceed amount from $10,199,96 to $10,999,999.96 for the period July 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2023 to Eden Incorporated for building rehabilitation to change the amount from $3,800,000 to $4,798,000 for the period January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. Lutheran Metropolitan Ministry for Youth Drop-In Services, Eden Incorporated for Diversion Services, The Haven Home for Building Rehabilitation and System Repair, Joseph's Home for Homeless Prevention Strategies, Stella Morris Incorporated for Building Rehabilitation and Repair, YMCA of Greater Cleveland, one for Building Rehabilitation and Repair, two for Shelter and Treatment Services, YWCA of Greater Cleveland, one for rental assistance and supportive services, two for the A Place for Me initiative to prevent youth youth homelessness, and mental health services for homeless persons, DBA frontline service for eviction prevention services, and the final one is CH and housing partners for a construction project. Good morning, Marcos Cortez with Health and Human Services on behalf of the Office of Homeless Services. This board approved the exemption from aggregation on January 3rd that allows contracts to go to the Board of Control and Council by individual contract dollar threshold rather than the total RFP value. Uh, This allows us to avoid any further unnecessary delays for our providers. Um, We are asking to amend the exemption so we can change the effective date to 7-1-2022 and add funds for Eden for their building rehabilitation project. Initially, the city of Cleveland uh, had awarded Eden some federal CARES funding, but HUD uh, made a determination that they could not use that funding. We had about a million dollars left uh, in our COVID allocation, so we are uh, the department determined uh, to redirect it to Eden. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Yes. Councilman Miller. So... uh, why are we replacing City of Cleveland funding? So I'll ask Aaron, who might have some more details on that. Uh, because we have to. No, uh, we so this they're in the middle of this of the huge rehab of Norma Hare, and they essentially they went forward on guarantee from the city that they were going to get funding and that funding didn't happen, and they already started their purchase. So we are, we had to step in, unfortunately. And we also, we had set aside funds for COVID, kind of not really knowing, when ARPA funds came through, not really knowing what, you know, the COVID situation would be, so we, and once we realized that we didn't need those, then we were able to allocate them to Eden. We're still hoping, we have filed um, a request with HUD to see if we can get any kind of exemption or further detail on why it was rejected, but we haven't gotten anywhere yet. And is this coming out of our regular ARPA allocation? Is that? It's, yeah, it's what was allocated to Office of Homeless Services. Uh-huh, okay. Thank you, are there any additional questions? I'd like to make a correction to the amount. I read it incorrectly into the record. It's $10,1,999.96. Thank you. Hearing no additional questions, just double checking, there's no additional questions, correct? Okay. No, hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve as amend, with the amended date of 12 31 2023. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dever. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item approved. Thank you. Moving on to consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are BC 2023-127 through BC 2023-130. Can take a moment to review those items. Let me know if you have any questions. There are no questions. I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Porter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Is there any other business? Yes. 
we have one additional item to add to the agenda as an item of note, non-voted item number three, Department of Public Works submitting a special use permit with the Cuyahoga Valley National Park for authority to use various parcels of land or facilities in Cuyahoga Valley National Park for pre-phase work associated with the replacement of Pleasant Valley Bridge number 09.68 over Cuyahoga River in the City of Independence and Village of Valley View for the period March 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2024. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Question on this item. Oh, sure. Should it read February 27th as opposed to 23 on the top of the sheet? I had mine under additional item, Board of Control, February 23rd. In red. Uh, yes, I think that's the date that we received the request. That should be 27th on there. That's correct. And it'll be added to this agenda, so I think it was just, you know, a typo the way it was listed here. But in the minutes, it will be considered an agenda item. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Is there any public comment? Uh, no public comment, but we need to vote to add that to the agenda. Oh, okay. Uh, make I a motion. Move. Second. Oh. Second. With the date of February 27th. Yes. Councilman Miller and Mr. McAleer. Thank you. And then can we vote on it? Oh, I'm sorry. No, we don't <laughs> need to vote on it because it's a non-voted item. Oh, I ah, need okay. vote on adding it to the agenda. We, we, we had the motion. We did. Um, second. Councilman Miller made that motion and then and seconded McAleer. it. But did we actually vote on it? No. We didn't oh, say. so we need to. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Make a motion to. My motion is to add this item to okay. the agenda, noting the date of February 27th. I can make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is that, All those that was the right verbiage? All those. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, no public comment? No public comment. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, second by uh, Councilwoman Turner. Thank you.